Hello everyone, my name is Zu Guerra from Hugo's Desk. Got a brand new video series this week. It's called You Just Have to Be Better. Yes, better. You know, when you're not that good and you should just be better. So every week I will present a tutorial for visual effects in under five minutes. Under five minutes, you ask, well, I am all but tired of long ass tutorials. And you know what? You can always watch the video again. It's not like it's a live art performance that only 20 people watched and was lost forever. Right, so let's get started. So this week, you just have to be better at using depth of field and nuke. Timer starts now, five minutes. So I have a beauty and then I have also a Z depth. Now the Z depth of course needs to be shuffled uh, because uh, as usual the Z depth node is actually showing up on the layer and not on the RGB. You can clearly see that this is a raw depth which means it's to scale for the 3D scene and not only we have to shuffle that depth pass into our RGB so we can see it, uh, we also need to actually find out where is the furthest uh, point from the screen and the closest point from the screen. It's much easier for you to do that when you look at the RGB and just swap to uh, alpha channel. Putting a grade node and of course always don't forget to actually look at the RGB and not have your viewer set to that grade node. With that in mind then you can have the value of three, in this case it's 3108 which is the furthest distance from the Z depth. Uh, and then the closest range which is around the metal bars on the front of her uh, armor. I would say that it's if we look at the shuffle node you will see that it's around 1,800. So that's, of course, the closest to camera. So closest to camera usually is the white point. Furthest away from the camera is the black point. Then, voila, you get a grade node, uh, which basically uh, normalizes our Z depth. Now, as it is normalized, of course, you always have to do a few adjustments because certain elements are actually hidden. So with that in mind, you have to kind of open the grade node and kind of make subtle adjustments so that you can reveal or not reveal as much as you want from the scene. Of course, always keep in mind that the closest to camera should always be one. That's the idea, because that's the sharpest element of the Z depth. Uh, with this in mind, I am going to ch change the white point so it's become one. And then, of course, I'm going to also put a clamp uh, to one so that you don't have the Z depth with any. Since it's normalized, you do not want dynamic range anymore. Of course, keep in mind, you don't have to animate the Z-Depth if the image is moving. In this case, we're only looking at uh, one scene. Then, of course, you do a copy node. Uh, the copy node, of course, will allow you to copy the, uh, in this case, the red channel, which is what you progress processed over there, into your Z-Depth into the stream. This is because the z defocus node only works if you have a Z-Depth in your stream. Now, once you put the z defocus node, immediately you'll see that it will start processing. As you can see, pointing the focal point, I can now see what's closest and what's defocused and what's not defocused. So I can actually animate that my depth of field by using the focal point. Once that's in, I'm going to switch to focal plane setup so that I can see what's green is the focus. Now, by changing the depth of field, I can have more in focus or less in focus. And that's the whole thing here. Green is in focus, blue is out of focus. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go back to the result and then I'm going to just pump the the defocus more. I'm going to put a 20, maybe even more. I'm going to, yeah, 20 is enough. And as you can see, now we have a very extreme depth of field already on the scene. As you can see, the wing is completely defocused. And uh, I'm just going to change the blade to a seven blade so that it looks a bit more uh, like a lens. Now, the only thing left, of course, here is just to put my background. I'm going to just put a merge node A over B. I'm going to put my background. Now, I'm not going to bother to put a ZD focus into the background. I do have a depth field, so you guys can feel free to do that. But I'm just going to put a normal defocus node. I'm going to just pump up the defocus, uh, you know, just so that it looks normal when she's against this background. Now, one of the things that we have on the depth is that we start to have some artifacts. These artifacts are coming from the fact that the depth of field is always crucial to white and black. So what's white is sharp and what's black is not sharp. And as you can see, the depth of field does not match the actual edge of the alpha channel. And that is a problem. That's because the alpha channel has been anti-aliased and the depth of field is not anti-aliased, which is normal. You do not want anti-aliasation on your depth of field. Because like I said, if you have a gray pixel, that pixel will be on different depth in the image. Because remember, black is furthest from the camera, white is closest to the camera. There's a couple of ways of fixing this, too, at least, which you can find on Wikipedia. One of the nodes is the edge extend, and the other node is the color edge. Both of them you can find very easily on Wikipedia. 
Now, of course, both these nodes will require a mask or better an alpha channel. I would, of course, always start with the color edge. That is the most complete uh, node from both, both of them, but they will both work. Only thing I need to do is to just pipe the mask into my beauty and then the RGB into my processed depth. Once I do that, immediately the result of my color edge, which will have to be, of course, inverted because the color edge by default will be inverting uh, my stretching. Now, as soon as you put inverted, I'm going to turn off the blur grain and as, as you can see the, what the color edge does is that it grows the pixels outwards which is really good because then you can extend the edges so as the edges were too short for the depth of field in the alpha channel of this image by growing the, uh, the textures you can actually grow them enough so that they actually go outside the boundaries of that alpha channel and as you can see the last pixel which was just right there now is actually extended from the original cut and voila now as you can see my color edge has removed all those artifacts in blooming artifacts that you had on the depth mainly because those pixels especially on the top there and especially on the armor on the back especially the ZD focus did not knew if those pixels were actually in the front or actually in the back and as you can see that fixed it okay and that is it a very simple uh, pipeline for ZD Focus and tweaking the ZD Focus with an edge extend. Okay, so unfortunately our five minutes are up. So I see you next week on another edition of You Just Have to Be Better at something that will happen next week. As always, you can like and share and subscribe and make a comment on this video. If you do not like or do not want to subscribe or do not want to leave a comment, please don't. So I see you all next time. Goodbye.